The score went on to 228 for naught. Bad light stop play. Grange and Haynes, well, what can you say? A record opening partnership in England versus West Indies cricket history. And Greenwich, 100 in his 100th test match, both full of fine attacking strokes on a perfect pitch. Well, as for the bowling, only De Freitas bowled the line and the length to win some control for England. Malcolm was erratic, small, strangely offline, capal, a lot of half volleys. So, West Indies have made a big move to win this cable and wireless series. Probably only rain can save England. But the cricket was just a backcloth to the main debate should Viv Richards have issued a verbal threat to an English newspaper reporter. It was a small lapse of behaviour on his part, but he will regret it in a very big way. The newspapers will make sure of that. From Antigua, good night. Day two of the final cable and wireless test. A long, long day for England as first Gordon Greenwich, then Desmond Haynes hit centuries and shared an unbroken opening stand of 228. And if day two was a long day, day three could be even longer for the England bowlers because on a perfect batting pitch, the West Indies will be aiming for a massive score and sometime before Tuesday evening, a crushing victory that will clinch this cable and wireless series. Yes, indeed, they have a very strong platform indeed. 2.28 for no wicket, two centurions out there, how well they've batted. Now, West Indies will want to be in a hurry, I think. They may even want to bowl at England at the end of this third day because they must take into their calculations the possibility of rain. As for England, well, they must bowl and hope, and they know enough about defensive bowling in one-day cricket. Let's hope it works for them today. The weather is beautifully sunny. It's a lovely, fine day. There'll be no hiding place for England, but let's see now how they get on. And that's the first four of the day. Bad ball from De Freitas and Haynes puts it away for the first boundary. His 16th, the 31st four of the innings. And another bad way to start, Jeffrey Boycott. Well, it is. It's uh, always quite depressing for the fielding side when they take up the morning's play and they look at the scoreboard they haven't even got a wiki it's happened to me before the opposition are in a great position and lots of batting to come that's a beauty that's a real beauty through Haynes completely and we haven't seen many deliveries beat the bat in this long partnership and that one certainly did well, that's the best delivery I've seen this test match. The line, the length, down the corridor, outside off stump, but it really moves away from the batsman. That wasn't a bad shot by Haynes. Look how straight the bat is. Well, that's into the gap, and uh, that'll go down to the boundary at cover. Well, that wasn't a good delivery. It was a little short, a little wide, and you can't give Desmond Haynes any room. 252 then, a tremendous partnership between these two, Greenwich and Haynes. Stream of superb shots. Lovely timing, nice even bounce. I feel sorry for De Freitas here, he was a bit on the short side and a little bit wide, but he wasn't miles astray. Uh, that's the margin of error against a top class batsman. Oh, and that's a short delivery, pulled away, and over the fence it goes, a magnificent pull shot. A magnificent pull shot for six, just carried the fence down there, but what timing from Greenwich. Have another look at this. Beautiful shot, it's just medium pace, short of a length. Tremendous blow. Mighty shot by Greenwich. They've now started to unveil some of their shots. Four down the ground. Since yesterday, Tony Lewis has been a little bit perplexed about the absence of the straight mid-off and mid-on. And there you see 
the straight drive again from Gordon Greenwich. Beautifully executed. Magnificent drive by Haynes. We saw a number of those yesterday, and that's another one for four. It's not easy to restrict these batsmen on this sort of a pitch. That was in no way a half volley. You can see where it pitched. Desmond Haynes just followed through, played through the line of the ball. That's well fielded. Well, I must say, I've been pretty impressed with the De Freitas' performance. He's certainly bowled pretty well, try to keep his cool. He's quite a flamboyant cricketer. And have a look at this for a bit of fielding at mid-on. Diving away to his left. Yes, that sort of athletic feeling really does give a bit of confidence to your bowlers. A wonderful athlete. And they need all the help they can get on hot days when times are tough. Batsmen are dominating. You need all the help you can get from your fielders. Oh, he smashed that one straight down the ground. Flat one bounce into the fence. And that really was a brute force shot. It was played from around about off stump, perhaps even just outside. Greenwich cutting loose. Well, there's nothing to say about that. That wasn't a bad ball. That's just a batsman feeling. He wants to really get after the bowler. Good length ball outside of stump, quite a few inches outside. just past the stumps and that brings up the 296 and it hasn't gone unnoticed by some of the crowd here that equals the partnership they put together on this ground against India so one more and they'll be ahead of it quick single and that's 297 so they've improved on their 296 He hasn't quite got there. The throw has come in all the way from Gladstone Small. And he's got him. Well, they've broken the partnership. Desmond Haynes is hanging his head. Greenwich doesn't want to go. Well, Greenwich is out. This partnership has been broken on 298. Going for the 299th run. This is how it happened. Well... Everybody thought the throw would come in from Gladstone Small back to the wicketkeeper. He throws in one movement, Greenwich is still halfway down the pitch, and it is tight. Yes, what a wonderful decision. What a wonderful decision by the umpire. Yes, there's no doubt that he was labouring a little bit. He wasn't really flat out, so the partnership has been broken. 298 for one. Well, the thing is that Gordon Greenwich, if you watch the non-striker, he's, he's cantering quite easily. He thinks that this throw is going to go straight back to the wicketkeeper. Look, he's halfway in the middle, he's cantering steady, and he suddenly realises he's in danger, and he's short. Catches him very, very unawares. There's a big shout there, and that must have been close. Just a little bit lazy getting out of that. Yes, it's definitely worth the shout. Just angling in to Desmond Haynes, but the batsman getting forward. As we've noticed that most of the umpires in the Caribbean, if the batsman is prepared to get forward, play straight, they usually get the benefit of any doubt whatsoever. Beautiful bowling. It's a really good effort by De Freitas. 
Well, every now and again, he gets it right in that corridor on a length. Just now and again, he's made Desmond Haynes play and miss. I just wonder where the, the disco's gone today, Easter Sunday maybe, or? Usually we've had thundering music here day after day. It's a very peaceful day's cricket, except for an England bowler. See what I mean? Well, they heard me. Cue the music. Well, not too bad of all that. Just a good pitch, a little bit wide. Just give Richardson a little bit of room. I've said before in this series, he's a batsman that likes to cut and pull. He likes the cutting shots off the back foot and the pull shots. There we are, that's the, uh, the disco man. And that's a thumping good shot. And no point in chasing that. The pitch is so good that the margin for error for the bowlers is so small. Just threw that up a little bit, the Gladstone Small. Well, he's hit that. There's no one down there. Into the fence it goes, just in front of square. Money for old jam, that is, or old rope, whichever you choose. Short ball, and Desmond Haynes has been whacking into the boundary for a fair while during this match. That is meat for Desmond Haynes. He didn't really rush onto him. He had enough time, saw it well, and that was hit in front of square. Just to show you how well he hit it and how much time he had. He's, all, he's hit that one in the gap behind square for four as well. Another short delivery and another boundary which takes him to 149. Here we have people looking on. He looks quite relaxed, not even in cricket, cricket gear. Oh, that's well bowled too. Now that's the place to bowl. This is the quickest of the English, English bowlers and this was a good delivery. That is where he should be bowling. Just outside the off stump, as the Englishmen keep on referring to it as the corridor of uncertainty. Into the gap it goes, it's going down towards the boundary. So four more to Haynes, the score moves on to 342 for one. Well, he's clobbered that from outside the off stump and put it down over mid on. Richardson has come in. Whether he's had instructions or not doesn't really matter. I get the feeling that even if he hasn't had instructions, he can read the game well enough. And he's really played a number of superb shots. He's been very aggressive. Well taken, beautifully taken, but Richardson is not moving. An appeal for a catch at the wicket. I think Richardson felt that he squeezed the ball into the turf. Looking across to the umpire at square leg, umpire Weeks, umpire Archer is coming across. The England team can't believe it. It was well taken by Russell. It can't possibly, possibly have been hit into the ground, surely, because Although, I mean, Richardson is the sort of fellow who might know, but he certainly looked out. Yes, he's given him. Richardson caught behind. He waited for the decision. Malcolm finally gets a wicket, and Richardson is caught by Russell after the umpire's consult. Well, let's take a close look at that. That looks out to me. He just sliced it, but what did happen is Richardson hit the ground very hard with his bat. He jabbed down into the ground, and 
you lose the sensation completely. Sometimes you just do not feel the nick of the ball in the bat or how it left the bat. Watch again and just see how deeply the ball, the bat goes into the ground. Well, that from this angle to me looked out, but Richardson is an honorable man and he's not the sort of fellow to hang around. Now that's pressurizing of the umpire, I suppose. Ed looked out. He's bowled him off the inside edge, Carl Hooper. A disappointing return to the West Indies team. Goes for one, and the West Indies are now 358 for three. Yes, an inside edge. Good luck for David Gable. 358 for one. A little inside edge onto the off stump. And I'm very happy for David Gable. He's taking some stick in this match. The chant is we want Malcolm, Viv Richards has strike. We've got two men back on the boundary at square leg. He doesn't want to miss hit one in that direction, otherwise he will be out. On the other hand, if he does hit it, it could end up in the church outside the ground. Devin Malcolm to Viv Richards. In the air, and he's got him, he's got him, he's out, caught! Devin Malcolm's got his first ball. certainly quieten them down around here. Unbelievable. Viv Richards fancy Devin Malcolm. There can be no other reason for the shot. He has decided to go after him again and he has hit it straight to extra cover. Jeff Boycott, a little lollipop. Well, I think my mum would have got that in her pinny. A nice little lollipop to mid off. So there we go, the end of the great man. At least he can still smile about it. And his mate there going off the ground in tears. He really is. He cannot believe it. 359 for four. Well, there he is, the little fellow himself, Gus Lagi, the new batsman. Got him, he's dropped him. Oh, how can you drop one like that? Well, we know it can happen. That one went straight to Larkins and straight through him. There it is again, the deflection there. He's got it totally covered, lovely height. But down he's gone, and I can tell you that's going to spoil Wayne Larkins' cup of tea. And that's gone now. So Logie has finally gone, badly dropped by Wayne Larkins before T. And Philip De Freitas finally gets reward for his efforts. He's bowled really well in difficult circumstances. And Logie now edges a catch to Alan Lamb. Straightforward catch. And this time the fielder takes it. Logie is gone, and it's 382 for five. Fully deserved wicket by Philip De Freitas. Neat catch, and justice was done. He's been by far the best bowler for me. He's gone. Desmond Haynes caught behind by Russell. Has a look at the pitch as he walks off. Gladstone Small has a wicket. Very good delivery, this one. And the West Indies are 384 for six. And what a fine innings by Desmond Haynes. Ended by a very good ball. Lifted, lefted, gloved it. And into the gloves of Jack Russell. Superb innings by Desmond Haynes. Out for 167. And the West Indies are 384 for six. A bit of bounce. Ball going through off the gloves. Taken shoulder high by the wicketkeeper. It shows to the England feelers that this pitch has still got a bit of bounce in it. A 
That's high in the air. Oh, it just beats him over the top. Four runs on Gladstone's ball. Had he been further back, could have caught that. Well, this is the top edge here from Jeffrey Dujon. Let's see if we can see exactly where it lands. Because apparently the umpire has changed his decision there, Tony. There it goes, over the top. Well, Ooh. I think we are pretty harsh on Gladstone, really. But if it was a four, he could have been standing on the line, could he not? Oh, there's a mix-up here. This could be out. Yes, he'll be gone. Yes, he's got him. Yes, he has. He's out, run out, down at the far end. And I suspect that there was a yes-no call there. And Dujon is the victim. It was the batsman striking's call because it was in front of square. He said yes, then no. And Dujon couldn't make it back. Yeah, that's a good bit of feeling. It's, it's gone in the danger area towards mid-wicket. And uh, Rob Bailey's picked up. There's obviously a yes-no. And Devon Malcolm's done very well there to catch the ball and take the stumps and uh, uh, the West Indies seem to have quite a few run outs throughout the series and uh, that was another mix up between two of their players certainly was 415 for 7 he's got him caught behind yes he's got to go of course he has big nick no doubt about that one another wicket to England a thick edge there, flying through the wicketkeeper, and there's no way in the world they make mistakes on little orthodox edges like that one. We'll have another look at it. A quick delivery, outside edge, and it went straight to the keeper. That's the end of Baptiste. He's making his way back to the pavilion now. Pretty straight, quick delivery, this one. Baptiste going for the drive there. He really did. It looked to me as if he fancied it. 417 for 8. Well, there goes one of those booming straight drives right into the gap and down to the boundary. He's very tall. He can stand up and play the ball on the up. And this is an example of that. Well, that's a good shot, Tony. I mean, the ball's off stumpish on a length and he's hit through it because he's a tall man so quite a lot of leverage and he's he's not middle that quite rightly but it's uh, it's still gone for four and uh, he's used his height to hit that ball down the ground it's a good shot he's got him he's certainly a flick of the elbow there he's had a glance down at the uh, umpire who's dead uh, still at the moment and uh, so there was obviously a little noise there. Probably was the elbow. That's brought a smile to Kirtley's face. Uh, it's difficult to tell whether he got a touch here or not. In fact, David Capel's found a fair bit of pace there and got that ball up and has gone through well. Certainly gone close to the gloves, but uh, difficult to tell whether he's hit that or not. in the air and well taken beautifully taken by Jeffreitas so the West Indies lose their ninth wicket for 433 and this is a very good catch by Jeffreitas mainly because he couldn't really anticipate how much the ball had on it he had to search for it and then dive forward to take it inches from the ground Ambrose is out and the West Indies, 433 for nine. Completely miscued. He was aiming somewhere over mid-wicket. Up it went. De Freitas would have sighted it late. That's why he comes in late, but he held it really well. Inches from the ground, threw himself forward. It's in the air. Back goes Smith. was a horrible to try to take high swirling ball over his head
well, better him than me. Not a very easy catch to take. Well, at least he's acrobatic. There's Desmond Haynes. Nice and relaxed after a little 167. The bowling! Neck and crop back of the stumps. Isn't that a beautiful sight? There is nothing nicer in cricket than to see those stumps splattered all over the place as long as they're not yours. So Courtney Walsh out comprehensively bowled. This is how it happened. A delivery that pitched on off stump and beat the outside edge of the bat. And back they went. So now it's over to the England batsman. As a result of that dismissal, it's over to the batsman to see that they don't lose any wickets tonight. Greenwich and Haynes then, 298. What a tremendous partnership that was. A new record for West Indies against England and the all-time record for an opening partnership for the West Indies. And then that amazing collapse, Hooper won, Richards won, and the stumble and the flawed innings towards the end, 446 all out, and England, I think, were probably relieved to see that. As for the bowling, well, I thought De Freitas the pick of them, 27 overs, one for 74, wickets for Capel, and for Devon Markham, four, Gladstone Small, rather disappointing, I felt, one for 123. So England face a tricky 20 minutes or so batting before the close. It's the second over, two for no wicket, and Kirtley Ambrose is bowling to Wayne Larkins. In the end, between the two of them, well, you can't stand there and watch them go by. You've got to both go for the ball. It was in the air between Greenwich and Hooper, and both of them let it go. Yeah, it's been not a good shot there from Wayne Larkins. He's fencing at this. Oh, my goodness, the slips. Dear, oh, dear, they were watching each other there, but not a good shot from Wayne Larkins. Just fencing at this. Never really got his body over and behind the ball. Ball in. Good night, Wayne Larkins. And I think he put his hand up there, suggesting that he couldn't see... Almost as if it was inevitable. Well, this is how it happened. It pitched just outside off stump. It didn't really do anything different. It bounced a little bit more than he expected. Off the glove it came, back onto the leg stump. And so he's out bowled. So once again, England off to a bad start. 16 for one. Well, Wayne Larkins is looking to leave this ball. You see the bat, he doesn't really play it. But he leaves his bat hanging around and his hands as well. And the ball hits something and goes, there it is, top of the bat. He never really played at it. I think that hit the top of the splice and just went onto the stumps. You can't hang the bat around. If you're not going to play it, get the bat right out of the way. Yeah, he just played on. Well, after that wicket, they came off for bad light. It was a very difficult time for Stuart and Larkins and infuriating for England to lose a wicket and then come off for bad light. As for the bowling, it was hostile. I thought it was clever, too, because there were no bouncers, and that made sure that the West Indies stayed on as those shadows grew. Score 16 for one, then West Indies lead by 170. It's difficult to hold out great hope for England, but if there was a pitch on which to fight a great rearguard action, this is it. From Antigua, goodbye. Thank you.